bacteria on a trip. The human body, mine and yours, is made up of various types of cells which form tissues, organs and organ systems. These various types of cells include human body cells and different microorganisms, for example protozoa, fungi, viruses and bacteria. There are approximately 10 to the power of 13, that means 10 trillion human body cells and 10 to 100 trillion bacteria in our intestines. Bacteria are therefore an important part of our body, which is why we take a closer look at them. Intestinal bacteria, such as Escherichia coli, break down complex plant sugars, which we cannot digest on our own. They also process amino acids or break down other substances, which could otherwise cause harm. They also produce essential nutrients such as vitamins K and B12 and help us fight pathogens. Different cell types support each other, work together and live in harmony. However, uninvited visitors show up from time to time. Harming or demolishing the area, they expand and try to control the environment. This weakens the human. They do not feel well and can, for example, suffer from fever, diarrhea and even pneumonia. Simply put, Bacteria can be divided into good and bad, or profitable and harmful. Against harmful bacteria, or as we call them, pathogens, antibiotics can be used. Antibiotics are always targeted against a specific group of bacteria. They can also work in different ways. Some kill the bacteria, while others only stop their growth. However, antibiotics only work properly when used according to the doctor's instructions. If they are not taken at the prescribed intervals or for the entire recommended time, some of the pathogens may survive as they develop resistance to the antibiotic. This means the antibiotic no longer stops the bacteria and they happily reproduce further. This ability is mediated by the so-called antibiotic resistance genes. Whether we go through an infectious disease or feel well, it is necessary to get rid of waste that our body produces. On the toilet, we dispose of undigested food residues, drugs and excess bacteria. Flushing them sends them through tubes to the sewer, which leads to a wastewater treatment plant. Apart from human waste products, waste from other sources like industrial sites, agriculture and hospitals travels to the treatment plant. Wastewaters contain both the good bacteria, which have only become redundant in our body, and the bad, pathogenic ones. Their journey can be long and wild, turbulent even. Bacteria, which are unafraid of environmental changes and which do not mind leaving their warm place in our intestines, arrive to the treatment plant. If they successfully pass through screens, sand traps or sedimentation, they reach the activation tank, where a party of several hours to several days takes place. However, there are also residues of antibiotics or other drugs and disinfectants in the wastewater and therefore in the activation tank. The bacteria either need protection or just get bored and need to liven up their party somehow. Those who didn't bring any protective equipment have enough time to acquire it, and this way antibiotic resistance genes may spread between individual bacterial cells, regardless of their relationship or origin. Foreign genetic information can be acquired, for example, by temporary joining of two cells, or by the bacteria being attacked by a virus. The genes of interest are also found freely around and the bacteria can bring them into their cells themselves. What exactly is going on in the activation tank then? Scientists have been trying to figure it out for decades, but they don't have it easy. It is known that the party has an unlimited supply of food and an abundance of body-to-body -body contact. But bacteria are very careful. They disguise themselves. Their pathogenicity or resistance cannot be recognized with the naked eye. Special analyses are needed. If we just look at the bacteria under a microscope, we won't see much. At best, we see separate cells which differ at least a little in shape, and at worst, we only find dense clusters of what may be anything. Fluorescent staining can help us. We can use it, for example, to find out what types of bacteria are in close contact with each other. This analysis will, however, not determine whether a given bacterium carries antibiotic resistance genes, which means whether or not it is resistant to certain antibiotics. For this purpose, it is necessary to obtain their genetic information, to extract DNA from a bacterial cell and use modern methods of molecular biology. This means to analyze it bit by bit, gene by gene. How many antibiotic resistance genes do we know? Thousands, and new ones are still being formed. 
Bacteria are very creative, whether their environment is the human body or a wastewater treatment plant. So, what are the most burning questions we don't know the answer to yet? Is the bacterial protective equipment still the same as the one they use in the human body? Or are these microorganisms becoming more creative and inventive at the wastewater treatment plants? Do wastewater treatment plants function as reservoirs for antibiotic resistance genes? And if so, how do we prevent it? Can humans actually prevent antibiotic resistance spread? Some resilient bacteria, including antibiotic resistant bacteria, leave the wastewater treatment plant for surface water and thus for the environment. We already know that this is a much smaller amount than what comes to the wastewater treatment plant. Although the quality of treated wastewater does not correspond to drinking water, it comes very close to the quality of natural waters, such as rivers or reservoirs. Let's conclude this. Antibiotics work against bacteria. This means antibiotic resistance applies to bacterial cells, and not human ones. By using antibiotics correctly, we will reduce the spread of antibiotic resistance into the environment and back to humans. Wastewater treatment plants are an inexhaustible source of information, making them still a challenge for scientists around the world. At the same time, the treated wastewater leaving the treatment plant is part of the water cycle in nature, thus a possible source for drinking water production. This means we want to make this water as pure as possible, without the potential to spread antibiotic resistance.